Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I will show you how to use and calibrate the audio amplitude sensor in Firefox, a smartphone app that lets you visualize and record data from various sensors that are built into your smartphone. Now, when you open the audio amplitude sensor, you will probably see negative decibel readings, which is not consistent with the typical scale that we use to measure sound, which starts at zero for the threshold of human hearing and goes up to over 100 for very loud sounds like a jet engine. Now, we're not going to get into the detailed math or physics behind that in this video, but we would like to make our phone's readings match up with that common decibel scale. In order to do that, we need to calibrate it. Now, there are two different ways you can do this. One involves using a separate decibel meter that comes calibrated from the factory. So let's take a look at that method first. Now, in order to do this, you will need three things. You will need another laptop, tablet, or phone with an online tone generator or tone generator app set to play a test tone of 1000 hertz or one kilohertz. You will need the external decibel meter and you will also need your phone placed at the same distance from the sound source as the decibel meter with the microphone pointed towards the source. So remember that your microphone is on the bottom of your phone, so when you hold it up to your head, the microphone is next to your mouth. So make sure you have the microphone pointed towards the sound source, just like you have the microphone at the top of the decibel meter pointed towards the sound source. Now, I'm going to play my one kilohertz test tone and record the value that I get on my decibel meter. So I had a value of about 85.2 decibels there. I'm going to write that number down. Next in Firefox, I am going to go over here to the calibration tab. I am going to enter that value that I just recorded in the field here for reference SPL. SPL stands for sound pressure level. So I'm going to click on that field, enter 85.2, and then exit out of the typing. Now I'm going to put the phone down, start the recording by hitting the play button up top, play my one kilohertz test tone again, and press the calibrate button. So flip the phone around so the microphone is facing towards the sound source, play my test tone, start the recording, press the calibrate button, and stop my tone. We can now see that Firefox has automatically calculated an offset to go from that negative decibel value to a value that's going to make a little more sense. So if I go back over here to the amplitude page now, we can see that I'm getting numbers in the 0 to 100 range that are more consistent with what I would expect using the decibel meter. Now, another option, if you do not have an external decibel meter available, is that you can use the fact that a quiet room, maybe with a little background hum from something like a computer fan, is usually at about 40 decibels. You can see that here if I stop talking. So, even if you don't have this meter, let's get rid of that, you can use that information to calibrate your app in Firefox. So, again, I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to take a look at what the uncalibrated reading is in Firefox. So in a quiet room, I was getting a reading of about negative 70 dB there. I know that that quiet room should actually be at about plus 40 dB. So in my case, that is a difference of 110 decibels. I can head over to the calibration app in Firefox, and rather than using this automatic calibration button, I can go down here to a custom offset and set that to 110. I then press the set offset button and you see that the calibration offset up here has updated to 110 decibels. When I now go back over to the amplitude tab, again, I am now getting numbers between zero and 100 like I would expect. Now, unfortunately, if you back out of the audio amplitude sensor in Firefox and go to a different sensor and then go back in, you're going to need to recalibrate each time. So when I go back in here, you see that it says status not calibrated up at the top. However, once you've done that process once, you can always just go back into the calibration tab and enter the custom offset, either the one you found using the calibrate button and a test tone or the one you found just using silence as the reference sound. 
So write that number down. And then for this phone, you can always just go back here, enter the custom offset again. So for example, I'm going to enter 110 decibels again. Press the set offset button, and then your readings should be okay. Finally, note that you will need to calibrate different phones individually. As you can see here with this iPhone 12 mini and this Samsung Galaxy S9, I do not get the same reading. So you can't just go through the calibration process on one phone and then enter that calibration offset on another phone. Even if you have two phones that are the exact same brand, you could have some variation in manufacturing. So if you need very accurate readings, it's a good idea to calibrate each phone individually. Now, if you are doing this in a classroom setting and calibrating multiple phones, that means you will need to be careful to make sure all of the phones are equidistant from your test tone when you do the calibration. If you have one student sitting up front and one student sitting in the back of the room, then the distance from the sound source will affect the calibration. The same applies if you are just using a quiet room as the calibration. You need to make sure you don't have one student sitting much closer to something like an air conditioner because that will also affect their reading. For instructions for science projects and lesson plans, you can do with Firefox, including the other sensors in the app that measure things like acceleration and light. Check out the links in the description below this video.